Hello and welcome. Um, okay, today I'm just going to walk through a couple of uh, little tips and tricks that I don't think I've touched on too much. I've had some questions about just some little pieces here and there uh, that people were asking about. And instead of uh, devoting an entire video to each one, um, I'm just going to kind of run through a few of the uh, quicker, easier ones. And just, just to give you a little guide as to how to get into the finer details of things a bit more. The first thing I wanted to explain and touch on is if, if you have the World of Disgraceland Vault, even if you don't, if you have uh, the other blank world building template, um, this, this top column here, this was created with CSS. So you, you'll have the CSS file uh, located directly within your snippets folder. Um, this is how it's set up. This, this is the title. This is just the image that it's pulling. This is that story of Disgraceland image. And then this right here, this is just, all I'm doing right here is I'm talking to my CSS. So, so right here, this means small banner. This right here means we're having smaller height. This is centered alignment. And this is just a bit more padding. Um, this is not necessary. It, I like the style of it. So I include it. And then all I'm doing is linking to the note. And it's the same, the same written out for each one. And you can, of course, if you want to, we can go six and we can add another, let's add one here. We can add another uh, section if we wanted to. Uh, let's just, for the sake of argument, we'll do lore. So we're going to add in another lore one. And do I have an image for lore? Let's check. Whoops, I also forgot. We need to uh, have a space there. Um, and instead of just typing all this out again, I'm going to copy this one. We're not going to use the same map PNG. Uh, I don't know what to use for this. Just for the sake of argument, uh, what do I have? I'm going to do 4T. I believe that's an image. Uh, I'm going to keep the rest of it the same. I am not pulling my map. Uh, I believe it's just lore. Dot. MD is what I want. Okay, so now we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We got six. Here's the lore page I just added in. And like I said, that was just like this. And you can keep going. Um, if you can see here, I've added seven. I've changed the number up here to seven. And now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's how you do that. You just make sure you change the number to how many uh, cards you want to uh, show here. And then just have your seven or however many you have linked in below, just written out just like this. And again, all it is, is it's the image, it's the CSS styling, and it's the note. And that's all it is. And the last thing I want to touch on with these is um, these weren't made using uh, the data cards like uh, some of the other locations around the vault are. Like I said, these were just CSS. So you don't, you don't need to go into the pages and set an image like this does have a set image here um but that's not what i'm using for cards these are just the image that we set within uh the main page section for the cards whereas um this t7 this cover image this will be pulled for other instances like do i have it here yeah this this lore section which is the exact same page as this um but this is pulling that image from this. Whereas up here, we just set a separate image manually. Uh, the next thing I want to quickly touch on is these call out boxes here, like this, this, all of them, uh, all of these, you can open and close these manually, of course, by clicking on them. However, um, if you ever need to, if you want to style them differently, you just go to the section they are, um, like what is, Okay, a look at Disgraceland here. So this is how this is set up. Um, it's just, it's a call out block. We're using custom CSS here. And within the custom CSS, we're grabbing uh, the data cards, pulling from anything with the tag home. But if I wanted to, if I, instead of having it look like this when I start it, when I open my home page, we can go down to it and we can change this minus to a plus. That's all we have to do. And then we go back to it and now it's always going to be open. It is permanently open unless you close it. So if we go back to it and we change the plus back to a minus, it is now permanently closed. And now you have to click and open it. It's just good for space saving. If you need to, sometimes it looks better when you have it uh, on full display. 
but that's how you do it. All you have to do, and it works on any, any of the ones that we have uh, built within our vaults. The other thing I wanted to touch on when it came to uh, custom CSS within the Disgraceland vault and the world building template vault um, is these right aligned boxes, these call out boxes that are always over here. You can see it here on my dashboard where I keep my calendar, where I keep my latest chapters. Um, and these are, I kind of have these uh, in different places. Like let's take a look at a character. Here's another one. Uh, so these are, these are just set up sort of the same way. Uh, the only thing I'm doing is, uh, these are custom CSS classes called notes. And within that I've defined it, I've defined it like this clean, meaning it removes background colors or icons. No, I, uh, it hides the default icon. Typically you're going to have an icon here, but I don't want it on my character sheets. So there's no icon and right just means it's right aligned. The plus, as we touched on, just means that the image will always be showing instead of having to open it when you come to the page manually. And this was just built using custom CSS. Uh, another thing that I've had some questions about is this last modified section here. Um, this is not custom CSS. This is strictly the data view plugin. Um, and this is set up, this is set up like this. As you can see, it's just strictly a data view plugin. Um, we're, we're using a table without an ID. We're not using the default ID that we usually pull from. Um, this last modified section here, this builds the clickable folder path and the note name for each row. Having link, will uh, turn it into a proper obsidian style clicking link. Uh, this is the information that it's just pulling from, and this is what it is naming it as. This is what I'm reading it as, last modified. And this is just how I'm sorting it. Sort by modified time date from, and we're just leaving it as the slash because I want to search the entire vault. I want my whole entire vault uh, referenced within this data view, just so I have a more universal area showing me a list of everything that I've worked on recently. This section right here, uh, all, all this does is it prevents my actual homepage from... Uh, showing up in this list. So every time I edit the home page, it doesn't show up within uh, the data view last modified list here. And this is just sorting it, sorting it, descending limit 10. And we can, we can change this. We can make it 30 if we want. And now we got a whole big list of the last 30 modified character modified anything. And that's just a quick walkthrough of that data view section right there. And finally, um, the last updated characters section, it's the exact same as the last modified section down here. And all it is, it's a data view query within a callout box, essentially. If we go in and we take a look at it, here it is right here. So I have, um, I have the callout box right here. I have it uh, open up all the time, so it's always open. And then within that is just the data view query right here. This section right here, this is showing the image. This is making sure that everybody has, is able to pull from their uh, note. They're able to take the image. And I have it all... Every character has a thumbnail within their property tag and then the uh, location of the PNG file for the uh, image I use for the thumbnail. The size of it, a little bit of styling to it, and then just the name I have it as. And going down, you see how I list out the other things. And uh, these are all, of course, they're filled in on the character sheets within the property tags. I have to have each one filled out for every character, like their status, if they're alive or dead, their role within the world, uh, what district they're currently in, what territory they're currently in, if they're part of a faction, and what their religion is. And we can add and expand or get rid of if it's too much. And this part here, uh, this is the time and the date. Uh, you can see here, we're sorting it by the modified time and we're just listing it as time date. That's how we're getting, we know when this was last modified our character. And we're pulling it from the characters tags right here and we're sorting it descending. And same as uh, the last modified, we can do, we can do 30 again. And now I got a whole bunch. I got everybody, well, not everybody, but I got 30, 30 plus characters here. And if there's anything else that uh, you have questions about or uh, you find confusing or you'd like some more information on, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll, I will respond to you as fast as I can there. Um, if it's something a bit more intuitive or a bit more uh, detailed, I'll try to work it into a video, whether I do um, a video like this where I'm just touching on various aspects or a whole dedicated video if it's a bit of a bigger, uh, bigger thing that should be touched on a bit more thoroughly. 
Um, other than that, my name is Mark with Pratt Design, and I will see you down the road. Mm -hmm.